We got Desert Storm, the Ground War Day 3, the Great Tank Battle of 73 Eastling. Hey, let's jump straight into it and see what we got here, man. So far, this has been crazy. It's literally just been... Iraq getting The armored divisions of Seven Corps have been preparing for this moment for several months. Right. They edge eastwards, peering through the sandstorm to find the Republican Guard, who are waiting for them in the Merc. The largest tank battle since World War II is about to begin. Oh, wow. This video on the Great Tank Battle of 73... ...in Kuwait. With the coalition closing in from multiple directions, resistance fighters in Kuwait City alert the CIA that a mass exodus of Iraqi troops from the capital is in motion. A developmental E-8 ground surveillance aircraft, rushed into theatre in time for the conflict, is ordered to scan the area, and detects 150 tanks, trucks and confiscated civilian vehicles forming into convoys and retreating north from Kuwait City, on a highway towards Iraq. Oh, Coalition commanders ready. instruct Colonel Hornberg, commander of 4th Wing, to deploy his F-15 Strike Eagles. I know you've just finished a hard night's flying, but I've got a job for you. I want you to put your guys back in their aircraft, fly over to Kuwait and stop a convoy. Stop it at all costs. The 12 Eagles, along with Navy A6 intruders, drop cluster bombs on the lead and rear vehicles of the convoy, stopping it in place. Trapping it. These 150 so vehicles are just the first in a line of thousands retreating from Kuwait. Oh, over the wow. next 48 hours, hundreds of coalition bombers hammer the traffic jam. The ensuing carnage on Highway 80 will earn it the nickname, the Highway of Death. That is brutal. That is brutal. The Highway of Death. They, they, they bombed the front, bombed the back, they trapped. Wow. And then they just keep going to rebot. Bro, this whole thing has just been, just been savagery. I can't lie. The commanders of the Tawakauna and Medina Republican Guard Divisions know that they must delay the advance of Seven Corps as long as they can to allow the escape of Iraqi units in the area, including other Republican Guard divisions. They also know that this is very likely to be a sacrificial task. They deploy in a defensive line alongside regular Iraqi divisions to meet the oncoming American and British armour anyway. They show courage in doing so. The second armoured cavalry. I love how the British is so far back always. <laughs> Regiment are continuing their probe eastwards with orders to find the Tawakauna division, but not to become decisively engaged. They are the lead scouting elements of Seven Corps. The British 1st Armoured Division have been holding a defensive line against Iraqi counterattacks uh -huh. throughout the night and now advance east towards the Kuwaiti border. Their objective is to sweep through the multiple Iraqi brigades and divisions on the southern flank splitting the Iraqi front line in half and isolating the Republican Guard units from possible reinforcements from Kuwait, allowing the rest of Seven Corps to hit them in concentration. Oh wow. At 7am, the 4th Armoured Brigade assaults the left flank of the Iraqi front line, who are caught off guard in a defensive line facing south towards the border. Unlike other frontline divisions, the Iraqi 52nd Armoured Division puts up a spirited response, firing and manoeuvring with their T-55 tanks. The return fire is ineffective, however, and throughout the morning, Challenger 1 tanks clear the way to their objective, destroying numerous Iraqi tank companies. The 7th Armoured Brigade... I'm pretty sure at this point now that, like, the Iraqis aren't even aiming. Like, I'm telling you right now, like, this is just brutal on them. Every time I, like, we watch this, it's like, oh, they're, they're shooting, but they're just constantly missing, man. They just, they just miss absolutely everything. Famously named the Desert Rats for their role in North Africa in the Second World War, sweep along the flank of another Iraqi line formed just to the north, catching the Iraqi troops watching south towards the battle raging with 4th Armoured. A Challenger tank of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards makes the longest recorded tank kill in history at 4,700 metres. A record that stands to this day. Oh, crazy. The Iraqis do not maintain all-round reconnaissance, and a company of Spartan armoured personnel carriers hook around to their north and attack them from the rear with Milan anti-tank missiles. Uh -oh. The division methodically continues east throughout the day, clearing objective after objective without loss. Disaster strikes in the afternoon, 
when a pair of American A-10s arriving on station are given a verbal description of the location of enemy tanks by a returning F-16. They approach an area 20 kilometers from their assigned tasking and spot vehicles below. They don't see the inverted V markings on the side of the vehicles indicating friendly forces and oh, mistake no. them for Iraqi T-55 tanks. They fire two Maverick missiles hitting two British Warrior infantry fighting vehicles. Unfortunately, nine are killed. Yo! The British as well? Wait, I swear that's the biggest number so far. Yo, there's been... I, I Bro, there's been more friendly fire in this war than the Iraqis actually killing the other side. The Brits, the Americans, the French. The 2nd Armoured Cavalry Regiment wow. has led the US Armoured Divisions since the beginning of the invasion. An instinctively mobile unit, they've had a frustrating stop-start morning, advancing but having to stop to wait for the heavy armour behind to catch up and organise into a line of attack. They edge forward to find the Republican Guard. Does that happen quite often? Because like, this video is like bringing to light to me really that how much is like kind of happening. It's happened uh, in all days pretty much. Well, it's happened like two, three times. But does friendly fire happen a lot? Where their orders are to not become engaged, but to allow the 1st Infantry Division to move to the front to do the fighting when they're discovered. They've already discovered and destroyed outer scout units of the Tawakauna Republican Guard Division. The sandstorms are terrible, and the visibility is down to a few hundred meters, so they edge forward without scout helicopter support. The three squadrons of 2nd Armoured Cavalry, named Cougar, Wolfpack and War Eagle, advance. Cougar Squadron is on the regiment's left flank and is made up of four troops, Eagle, Fox, Ghost and Hawk, each approximately made up of nine Abrams tanks and 13 Bradleys. At 3.20pm, 7 Corps Commander General Franks orders 2nd Armoured Cavalry to lead the line forward from the 60th to the 67th Easting, or the 67th kilometre of longitude east of the official campaign map centreline. The Republican Guard is reported to be just kilometres away, but the information is two hours old. Bradley commanders peer Regular into the sandstorm with their infrared sights. They roll forward slowly and deliberately. The young men in the vehicles are itching for the fight they all know is about to start. A pair of scouting BMPs and three solitary dug-in tanks are spotted by scouts. Lieutenant Haynes halts his Bradley and lines up the first tank with his optical sensor. He swallows a few times and fires a tow anti-tank missile into the unsuspecting tank. Boom! Quickly, he fires a second Boom. into the second tank and 25mm cannon rounds into the third. They just got the better tank. Scouts take fire from a cluster of secluded buildings. Seeing no evidence of civilians in the cluster, Captain McMaster, commander of Eagle Troop, warms his tank crews up to the coming fight by ordering a short burst of fire on the buildings. The small arms fire stops. Suddenly, a tank shell explodes just short of a Bradley. Man, they're just making this look so easy. Like, they are actually genuinely making this just look really easy. They're the vehicle just walking commander, through them. Lieutenant Gauthier, yells, Driver, stop, gunner, missile, tank. He finds the Tawakauna Republican Guard Division T-72 tank that's just fired on him, barely visible at 800 metres in front. He and a nearby Bradley rapidly return fire with tows, and oh. the T-72's turret explodes in a fireball. McMaster senses that a major combat engagement is imminent, and calls over the radio. Eagle Troop, battle stations, go to tank's lead, we're going to tank's lead. The Abrams tanks in his troop move to the front in a wedge formation. At 4.18pm, Cougar Squadron is ordered to advance to the 70th Easting. In a Bradley belonging to Ghost Troop, Lieutenant John Hillen radio acknowledges the receipt of the advance order and, fearing tank mines in the area, moves to sit on two Kevlar flak vests. Right. Staff Sergeant Burns asks him why he's sitting on the vests. I want to be able to make more Hillens when this thing is over, is the response. At 4.18, the great tank battle that they've been preparing for for several months begins. Through the clearing weather, McMaster spots the enemy. Contact, 
Five armoured vehicles direct front, three more off to the left. The enemy tanks are traversing their turrets towards Eagle Troop. He pushes the button on his Abrams laser rangefinder, 1,420 yards. Fire Sabot, he yells. The first round hits a T-72. Rapidly reloading, the second shot is away on the second Jesus enemy tank within man. three seconds. Yo! A ferocious volley of enemy fire lands amongst Eagle Troop. His vehicles are just cresting a hill, and to his horror, McMaster sees a mass of enemy tanks waiting for them on the other side. I right, if you're telling me none of these are hitting with this much going on, right? Yo, some of, bro, this is like a it's like a movie. It's perfect. You know what I mean? Eagle Troop aggressively charges forwards, with all Abrams and Bradleys now furiously returning fire at the enemy. Wow, what a tank. There war. is little choice but to take the fight to the enemy, ignoring wow. their regimental order not to become decisively engaged. Their troop of 9 Abrams and 13 Bradleys are going head to head with 39 Iraqi tanks, 54 armoured vehicles, and 200 infantrymen. Hold on. Hold on. Their troop of 9 Abrams and 13 Bradleys. 9 Abrams, 13 Bradleys. A22. Are going head to head with 39 Iraqi 22 versus 3. Tanks, 54 armoured vehicles, and 200 infantrymen. Jesus. Marauding into the enemy lines, McMaster's tanks have already destroyed 15 T-72s. Huh? And the closing range is only making the engagement more violent. A nearby scout platoon of Bradleys race over to reinforce Eagle Troop. A deadly ZSU-23 anti-aircraft gun opens fire on them, and they calmly destroy it with a tow missile. The Bradleys open up on the entrenched infantry with 20mm cannon fire. While Eagle Troop are taking hits, no vehicles are destroyed. The infrared Bro. sights on the American vehicles are far superior to the optics in the Iraqi tanks, whose commanders are relying on the regular lens sights to spot the marauding tanks through the storm. This is crazy, Eagle man. Eagle Troop violently bashes through the outer line of tanks and spots a circle formation of 17 T-72s to their left, what supposedly the? a reserve that would react to attempts at penetration or encirclement. They what never get the, the chance. Within seconds, the entire formation is obliterated. Why is the circle formation? Bro, this is just, this is just brutal, man. I ain't gonna lie, this is just brutal. They're just mowing them down like it's nothing. They they're honestly treating this like they've got the hot knife to butter, and they just lit, bro. The rest of the second armored cavalry regiment and the first and third armored divisions are now making first contact with the Republican Guard and the remains of the Iraqi 52nd Armoured Division, fleeing into the area from the British advancing in the south. Eagle Troop have found by far the largest defensive concentration. Ghost Troop are moving parallel to Eagle Troop, just north, in a fight of their own. Seeing the carnage that Eagle's Abrams are inflicting to their south, Ghost desperately try to keep a safe distance to prevent a friendly fire incident. Right. In doing so, one Bradley accidentally drives into a minefield and over an anti-tank mine. Oh, Miraculously, no. the vehicle survives. In a nearby Bradley, the crew oh, congratulate wow. vehicle commander Lieutenant Hillen on his foresight before frantically repositioning onto Kevlar vests of their own. At 6.40pm, just 22 minutes after the first shots were fired, Eagle Troop arrives at the 73 Easting and the shooting wanes. McMaster. What is this circular formation I'm seeing? Like, what? I'm, I've never seen this before, right? Uh, have they just lost their minds? Are they trying to make some sort of like tank baby blade kind of thing? Like, what, what is going on there? So calls for a status report and is astounded to find that Eagle Troop has not lost a single vehicle nor a single weapon system disabled. That is mad. Eagle alone has destroyed an entire Republican Guard battalion of approximately 47 tanks. 34 armoured vehicles and numerous trucks, with many bunkers destroyed and scores of infantrymen killed. The wow. destruction along the front line is similarly conclusive. American gunnery and firepower is superior, and the advantage of having infrared optics in the storm is decisive. Other engaged units don't need to perform the aggressive charge that Eagle Troop were forced into after cresting the hill and finding the enemy at short range. 
They were able to use superior range of the Abrams over the T-72 to keep the enemy at arm's length while destroying them. At 5pm, Ghost Troop of 2nd Armoured Cavalry are also at the 73 Easting, holding a defensive line with Eagle Troop. A counter-attacking formation of Iraqi armour approaches, and Ghost Troop requests artillery support. Their toes hit the first BMP as the artillery falls. The artillery shells used are dual-purpose improved conventional munitions, DPICM. The shell detonates close to the target and showers it with armour-piercing cluster bomblets. Wow. The 14 attacking vehicles are wiped out over the next 15 minutes. Over the next three hours, two similar counter-attacks are attempted, but with the weather clearing up, the troops of 2nd Armoured Cavalry are able to begin calling in A-10 airstrikes on the approaching armour. Now that they're holding the 73 Easting, they can bring their artillery to bear into a killing zone to their front. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. This is like training for them. This is genuinely like, for, like they're, they're testing their equipment. This is, I, bro, this is crazy, man. After many exhausting hours of repelling piecemeal Iraqi attacks, at 2am, the 2nd Armoured Cavalry Regiment is finally relieved on the front line by the 1st Infantry Division. Their work has been Herculean. The regiment as a whole has destroyed two whole brigades of the Tarakauna Republican Guard Division for the loss of only six men, accounting for 159 enemy tanks and 260 armoured vehicles. By comparison, the wow. entire 1st and 3rd Armoured Divisions combined have destroyed a further 76 tanks and 84 armoured vehicles. 7 Corps continues to press east through the night, continuing the fight with the Republican Guard. The British 1st Armoured Division moves northeast to join the rest of the Corps at an area of land known as Objective Norfolk, where the final showdown with the Tawakauna Division will take place in the early hours of Day 4. They need to surrender. The US 1st Armoured Division sets its sights on the Medina Republican Guard Division further north, encamped and waiting on a hill the US troops would later call Medina Ridge. In Kuwait, the coalition divisions continue their methodical advance north. There are reports of atrocities and prisoner snatching by the retreating Iraqi forces in the city, so the coalition advances with haste to liberate Kuwait City. The two US Marine Divisions approach Kuwait International Airport their objective in day four will be to capture it, and then ah. to move into Kuwait City with their Arab allies, including free Kuwaiti forces. Wow. Bro, they genuinely need to just surrender. Like, this is absolutely brutal, man, but really good video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all in the next one.